This video tutorial shows how to use Accounts Payable Inspire. So I'm in the Accounts Payable list here, and again, like all our lists, we can sort. You can sort all by your oldest to newest, your balance, up and down. And once you choose a vendor, you can go inside of it. You can pay and you can browse through, looking at each one of your vendors. Uh, you can select invoices to pay. So I select these two here and I just click on the payment button it pops up and by default this particular vendor is set to not print checks so it's left blank so typically we would do an EFT so we just do EFT or online or something like that we just hit post payment and we can go on to the next vendor and we can just pay this one say these two invoices here hit payment this one here, maybe we normally pay by EFT as well. So we can just type any word here online, post it, and go to, let's go back a couple here. And we'll pay this invoice and this invoice and payment. And this time we'll print a check. So it picks up the next check number automatically from GL. Uh, again, if this vendor was set to print checks, it would have populated that automatically. But let's say we look at our check pile and it's uh, check number 80 is missing, so we can just change that to 81. We can turn auto post off here if we wish, post automatically. We can choose a different account here or just go ahead and post it. So in this case, I've got three different check formats that are laid out here. Uh, I've got my report parameter list over here for doing report development, which I can close. And I'll just print all three checks. So there's the check on top, bottom. So let's go back and view them. And so actually we'll just say, uh, yes, it printed satisfactorily. And then we'll bring up our check viewer. So there's the check on top, center, no, we have two tops and a center, so two different styles of checks, or three different styles of checks that we've got here. Okay, so we can also, in accounts payable, if we're looking at a an invoice here, we can click on the journal entry to view what the journal entry was done at the time, so there's the entry there. Uh, if we want to look at one that's got a purchase order number on it, like this one here, we can view the purchase order. And in this case, it is uh, looking at purchase history, but if it hadn't been closed yet, it would it would bring up the the uh, purchase order in the purchase order module as well. So either way, it doesn't matter if it's closed or not. We've also got an open vendor button, so that opens up the actual vendor itself, so we can look at uh, vendor pricing, we look at open POs, purchase history for this vendor, uh, the purchase dollar amounts for the year, and everything about the vendor, because this really just opens up the vendor edit screen. And we can look at all, that looks at everything that's already been paid as well, so we can look at the linking that happened with those ones as well. And if we do show debits, it uh, if there was multiple linked invoices, they will be uh, linked together. Uh, we have notes that we can add here. We can add attachments to this as well. Okay, back to the list. And here, of course, you can print your reports. So you've got... Uh, Accounts payable by due date and accounts payable list. So I'll just preview these. So there's, I just, I had just selected the one. So it just printed that one vendor. But if I go print all, then it'll print for all vendors. So there's the whole list of payables by due date and our aged report broken down by currency and also by the account type that we use for the account number that we're using for the uh, accounts payable control account. And lastly, of course, like all of our lists, you can set filters and exports. So if you want to export this list to Excel, you could do so by just clicking on the export button and create an Excel spreadsheet for it.